So render settings is a huge discussion that I have with my students and they're always asking which are the best render settings and which one should I use. What's up guys, my name is Claudio, welcome to this course. In this very quick tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to actually use and understand the general settings or the general render settings inside Corona and I will explain everything for you and you'll see how super easy it is. Okay, let's dive into Max. So right here underneath scene, we've got general settings. We're gonna dive through all of these quickly. First one, show VFB. VFB stands for Visual Frame Buffer. If I click this button right over here, it is my Visual Frame Buffer. It is the same as clicking it here. Straightforward. Start interactive render. So if you are very new to rendering, an interactive render, if I click this button, is going to render the scene for me in an interactive mode. What that means is, for example, if I click on this tab and I move the tab around, I can actually move everything around and the render will be interactive, meaning that I change things and it updates immediately as opposed to stopping the render, moving, clicking render, moving, clicking render, moving, which obviously is not fun. So interactive render is definitely the mode you want to do when you are testing things out. Final render, you're going to click this big button over here once you've decided on your rendering limits, which we'll discuss in a few seconds. Stop that render there. Next is the setup light mix button. So this is gonna allow us to set up the light mix in our scene, whether we want instance, group, layers, or individual light. And from there, we can obviously use this tab over here, which is the light mix tab, allowing us to control each and every single light individually. I do have a tutorial on that, link below if you wanna check that one out. Next, we have the open material library. If I click on that, it is the stock standard built-in library that comes with Corona, which is awesome. It is the same as clicking this button right over there. Reset settings will obviously reset all of your settings. If you want to do that and start from scratch, feel free to do that, clicking cancel. Progressive rendering limit. Pass limit, time limit, noise level limit, which one is the best and which one you should go for. So let's discuss pass limit. If I choose all of them on zero, be very careful, this is going to make sure that the render will render for an eternity because there's no limit to that. So zero means it'll render forever. So what is gonna happen is that you need to choose a pass limit, a time limit, or a noise level limit. If all of them are zero, you'll render forever. Let's choose pass limit 10. I'm gonna click on the render button right over there. So remember this button is for your final render. Pass one of 10. So what's gonna happen is once it gets to 10 passes, it is going to stop. It does not matter the noise. It does not matter how many minutes, hours, and seconds it rendered. It will stop at 10. So that is the limit that we've chosen. So let's click cancel over there. If this is at zero, it will then look at the time limit. So you can choose it to be one hour, 10 minutes and 10 seconds. It will then render for that amount of time, ignoring pass limit and noise level limit. Doesn't matter, it will go according to the time. So let's say you put this one on 50. So you got a pass limit and a time limit. It will stop at the first limit it reaches, whether it's 50 pass limits or one hour, 10 minutes, 10 seconds. Finally, we've got the noise level limit, which I think is the best limit to use, and that is the noise level limit. So if you're wondering what a noise is, if we zoom in, yeah, you see that grain, grain looking feel everywhere, it's really, really blurry, that is your noise. You wanna reduce the amount of noise as much as possible inside a render to get it nice and crisp. Now, the golden number is 3%. It can range three, four, and five. I find three percent is perfect. That's what you're aiming for, and that is when I stop my render. So my noise level limit is always at three percent. Once it hits three percent, it stops. If you ever want to know where your stats are underneath stats, have a look there. You can see how many passes happened. The noise level limit is twenty-eight point four one. So in this render right now, it's twenty-eight percent, which is really, really high. So if I had to click render again and let this render, we'll eventually stop at 3%. Okay, the next function is the save resume rendering, and this is something that a lot of people don't understand or use, so let's crush this down. Number one is, let's start with this one, resume last render. So I stop the render, I can actually just resume that render straight away. Now bearing in mind we changed the pass time and noise level limit, if I click resume last render, one, two, three, click, it is going to start straight away from the last pass that was in there. Now, it is now going to carry on with the new limit I've chosen. You see that in bracket, it says 3%. So what's happening is it's gonna basically ignore the pass and time limit, and it's gonna go for the noise level limit. For example, again, if I click stop now, take this to let's say zero and put pass of 100 and click resume last rendering now, you'll see that the bracket of 3% is gone, and now it's gonna do 100 passes. 
this is useful in the event that you have, for example, come here, chosen 100 passes, you let it render 100, and you realize it's still not good enough. You can simply resume that render by adding either more passes or, of course, the noise level limit. It's a really, really useful way of continuing a render to get it up and running to the level that you want it. Okay, next we have resume from file and the save CXR file. So what I'm going to do here, underneath pass limit, I'm going to put this, let's say, at 50. So as I explained, it's going to stop when it hits 50 passes. Let's click the render button and let it render for a couple of passes. So we'll stop at about 10 passes and then I'll show you what we can do with the saving CXR file. Okay, so here we are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the render. It is going to carry on the denoising process. It's fine. You can cancel that. We have gone all the way to 20 out of 50. So the reason behind this is the following. You start the high res render and then you realize you actually need the PC for something else or you want to actually render this on another PC or anything like that. What we do here is we're going to save the CXR file. So click this button. Let's type in bathroom. We're going to click the save. Now that CXR file is saved. We can shut down the PC. Obviously we'll be shutting down Macs and everything. We can take this CXR file to a completely brand new workstation and all we need to do and I'll show you, let's erase that. And remember, we're 20 or 50. I'm now going to click resume from file. So clicking this, locating bathroom.cxr, we're going to click the open. As soon as I click on open, the render is going to start at pass 21 of 70. So it'll obviously carry on the rendering. And it'll obviously go 21, 22, and onwards and onwards. So the save CXR file is really, really awesome if you, again, want to work on another workstation or render it some other place and carry on working on your workstation. Let's click the cancel button. Next we have is the render hidden lights. So I'm going to start an interactive render. So I can either click this button here, start interactive, or I can click hold in. So it's a long click and start IR, which obviously stands for interactive rendering. If I go into my layers tab right over here, if I go underneath the light section over here and I start hiding lights, that is the same as switching them off. So for example, let's switch all these lights completely off. So I've hidden the lights by hiding the lights. I'm switching them off. If you do not like that function, you can obviously come here and just say render hidden lights, one, two, three, tick, and all the lights are back, even though they are hidden. Your choice. The next is render only masks. If you keep your cursor over the wording, it's gonna tell you that when checked, only render elements, which are not dependent on the beauty pass or render. So what that means is if you forgot to render out, let's say for example, the rendering ID pre-pass, which is a really great pre-pass to have in Photoshop. If you forgot to render that out, you don't have to actually render out every single layer again, especially the interactive layer, which is the one that obviously takes the longest. So what you can do over here is go underneath render elements. You're going to click on the add. You're going to choose see masking ID. As an example, click the OK button. All we want is just this pre-pass. That is it. Underneath scene, click and activate that button. Now if I click on render, what's going to happen is the interactive light mix render pre-pass is not going to render. So what that means is you're not going to get your full render. What you will get, however, is the C masking ID. And this render pre-pass right here will take you a matter of minutes. So if your render was 10 hours long and you actually forgot to add this pre-pass, by allowing Max to ignore every other pre-pass, you can actually get this out in a matter of minutes, which is a lifesaver. Stop, let's cancel that. Next we have is the material override. If you're unfamiliar with this one, if you activate this, you need to add in a material. So I'm gonna clear this out. I'm gonna click the none button. Then I'm gonna choose the Corona physical material. I'm just gonna click okay. I've chosen a normal standard gray material. If I go into the material editor, for example, I'm going to click and drag that guy right there and choose instance. Really important to choose instance because if I want to manipulate this material, it has to be instanced in the material editor. So whatever I change over here will reflect over there. Right now, it's a flat gray material, which is awesome because if I now go into the interactive mode, you'll see that everything is going to be flat gray, which is really cool because this allows you to see the light bouncing and the global illumination in your scene. And remember, because I instanced that, I can actually manipulate this now. So for example, if I choose something really funky, like a complete green, click the OK button, it obviously updates it completely. Okay, let's go back to the normal gray color, which is fine. Next, what we have is the 
zero objects excluded list. So what this is saying, if you have an environment or a room that has obviously glass and you want light still to bounce through, because if you can see, no light is actually bouncing through these windows because we have chosen the material override, everything is gonna be gray. Now that kind of sucks because you need to see light inside your scene if you want obviously sunlight. So what we can do over here is we can actually select specific objects in our scene and they will be excluded from the material override. I'm gonna select the floor and I'm gonna click the plus button. By doing this, because I've selected the floor, it'll automatically be added in the exclude list and then all of a sudden the floor now is being excluded from this material. We can do multiple items, so I'm going to click the bathtub, let's click on these taps, the sinks, this guy and this guy, click the plus button, and then all of a sudden we can slowly bring in all the items like that. Alternatively, if you click on this button right over there, it's going to give you a list of the include and exclude list. So I'm going to select everything over here, and I'm going to put them back that way, click the OK button, everything's back to grey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on zero objects excluded. So I'm going to click on this button, not the plus sign. I'm going to click on this button. Then I'm going to find glass. I'm going to put it into this list, click the OK button. And then all of a sudden, the glass has now been excluded from that button there, which is very awesome. Next is the preserve. So this is another include exclude list. If you are doing the material override, you can still preserve the displacement bump and opacity maps if you want. So for example, if you are using, and we can do this with an experiment, let's open up the material library quickly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this object over here. Let's go underneath masonry. Let's pick some rocks. Assign to selected object. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's go into an interactive render again. Start interactive render. Now, the object has a displacement or a bump map on it. And you can see that nothing's actually happening, it's a flat gray. And that's exactly what the material override does. But if you wanna preserve, meaning you wanna still see the displacement, the bumps, and the opacity maps, then you can tick these, close that, and have a look now. Now, it's still a gray material, but we are still wanting to see the actual displacement or the bump maps. So really great function there as well. Next is the denoising method. There are a couple of options over here that we can go through. You do have a lot of options here. The Corona high quality is the one that obviously Corona recommends and that is the only one that I do use. The amount of 0.65 and radius of one is a stock standard number. You do not have to commit to this number because underneath post, when your render is finished in high res, this option will become available. You can then change that from 0.65 to any number that you want. And finally, render selected pixel mask. Again, really cool function. I'm gonna deactivate material override. I am going to start an interactive render. The render selected pixel mask is something that's caused quite a few headaches with my students because a lot of the times they will tell me that the render is only rendering one object or two objects and they can't understand why. And that is because this option is actually enabled. So right now it's disabled, which is great. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the drop down list and I, there's an include exclude list, a viewport selection or object debuffer ID. We can ignore the last option. We're gonna constrain on the top two. So there's an include exclude list or a viewport selection. If I select the viewport selection, all of a sudden only one item is being rendered. And that is the item that I have got currently selected. So if we go underneath command panel, you'll see that I've got the wall selected. If I hold in control and select the tub, the floor, and any other items, you'll see that they are rendering on their own. Now what's beautiful about this is that they are rendering still with their global illumination. So you can see over here, you still got the shadows, the shines, the beautiful reflections, everything like that. It's very different to actually rendering something individually. So if I select the tub on its own, that is what I'm getting. If I rendered with just the tub in the viewport, Obviously that's really not what you want, so unhide all. So the viewport selection is anything that you have selected in the viewport will render, and that is the only thing that it will render. If I go to the include exclude list, I can now choose objects that I want rendered. So I'm gonna select, let's say the bathtub, click the plus sign, and now what that means is only bathtub will render. So it's exactly the same thing, except this time you can actually start creating a list for you. And that is it.
Very simple and easy render settings to understand with Krona. Hopefully you guys learned something from you and you like this. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Thank <laughs> you.